I said, I don't know whether you've thrown it at him on purpose or not, but I'm giving you a break on it and saying you didn't. Next time, I got to get you on it. Dan, I used to, as a matter of fact, even before games when I was refereeing, as the national anthem was being played and so on, I'd be praying at that time too. Just ask the Lord to give me the strength, the courage to be able to do my job in the way he would want me to do it. Me missing that easy layup like that. I mean, when I went up, he just went around pulling me like this. That's where the ball was. And if, I'm, if I'm behind you, how can I see that? Oh, I you know say saying? you ain't see it, though. I mean, I that's said, what I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't right. see it. I, I, I can live with that. You know what I mean? If I saw that, I would definitely call it. That sounds easy enough. I even I do that now, even like at church, you know, before I had my homily and so on, to give me the strength, the courage, and you know, the uh, you know, his spirit to be able to do it. On the final two, if you can't follow two, once that no. ball's out of your hand, Dark, I'm not going to give you that. Split second. I'm not going to give you that, Split Dark. Second, I haven't. I've never given it in 16 years. I'm not going to start now. All right. It doesn't make it mean you're going to win volleyball games or basketball games, but you win in the game of life. You win in how you treat others. You know, and your family members, your friends, and so on. And when you're more concerned with that than you are of like, I have to win at all costs. You know, it makes your life makes your life actually a lot easier too, Dan, doesn't it? I'm gonna see everything. All right. Hey, so we're gonna time. Out. Huh? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but why you why are you like going? I'm telling you, if I see something's a foul, I'm gonna blow the whistle. All right. I'm just trying to say, stay in your game. I'll stay in the mind. Let's go. I'm in my game. I'm trying. I'm trying to be in the mind too. I want to try to make every call right. I'm not gonna be right, unfortunately, 100 percent of the time. All right. I'm Deacon Steve, it is so good to be with you. Always a pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's really great because, you know, there's this tradition with our religious ed families. You know, the last time the Eagles were in the Super Bowl, you were the guest speaker. Mm -hmm. And the very last thing you did, I closed us in <laughs> prayer, and then you got on your knees and said, Dear God, please let the Eagles oh, win no. the Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh. And you they won. And that was so funny. And I can vividly remember being on that stage, you little, that little and, you know, my knees praying. It worked, Dan. It, see, it worked. God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. But, um, yeah, you know, you've, you've been on a journey, and, and I appreciate the fact that, like, you're doing this interview with me today because on Sunday you're going to be on ESPN uh, doing a broadcast. Uh, just tell me before we get into all this stuff, what's that like? What's it like to be on ESPN and have that on your schedule? Do you get nervous or what do you do? I think in the beginning I did get nervous, Dan. And then I just realized that this is something I know pretty well, officiating. Mm -hmm. So and I, I, before I would get on the air or even before I would turn around because the producer is in my ear or my mic in my uh, earpiece saying, OK, Steve, we want you to comment on that. I would always, it sounds weird, I'd say a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Let me say the right thing. One of the all-time great NBA officials, 25 years in the league, now working for us. Steve, you heard Mark and Jeff talk about some of the relationship woes that are going on. What do you think of their comments, and what do you think the situation is right now in the league? You know, give me the, you know, the, uh, the courage to, to tell it like it is, and people want to hear that and so on. So at first it was nervous, because um, I, I don't want to, I know how, how hard the job is, and most of the time I'm commenting on officiating. First, let me, let, me, let me explain exactly how officials look at this play. Okay. okay, that's the most important thing because nobody here has ever officiated a game, I don't say. Or, and or commenting on, did they uh, call the play right or interpret the rule correctly? And I, don't, I know how it is to be on that court making split-second decisions. Kibbe was able to call for time, but uh, Don Nelson upset about this call. Something was sliding. Now, he was sliding, but in my opinion, he hasn't turned away to gain an advantage. He grabs the ball. It's like someone who don't want it. And I don't want to say something that harms them or, you know, offends them. And I try to say it in a way where if they are wrong, um, that it, they, don't, they don't get offended by it, that when they go back to watch and view their tape, they'll probably agree and say, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean, Steve. I, mean, I, I didn't look at it this way or I was out of position or I misinterpreted that rule. So um, there's a fine line I try to walk. One, uh, with Draymond Green. And Draymond Green, in my opinion, is not a foul. Draymond Green, what we do with the referee, you have to look at where the defensive player jumps from. This defensive player, in this case, Draymond Green's one, goes straight up and down. Harden goes into him. But in the first half, what you were alluding to also, there were a few plays in which the defender did go underneath the shooter, mm. and I think a whistle should have been had there. Okay, maybe that Clay Thompson play. So start of the Rock, part of the Rockets' argument is that Harden got these calls in the regular season. He's not getting them now in this series. Uh, but the thought of you praying uh, for the Holy Spirit to guide you mm. when you're on ESPN, uh, and, and you're not going on ESPN and 
giving talks about God or the faith or anything like right. that. You're talking basketball, but right. you feel like in that moment, the Holy Spirit, having God in your life, makes you a little better, uh, even as an ESPN announcer. Absolutely, absolutely, because there's sometimes, and I think you maybe you can attest to this too, we don't even know what we're saying. And it's at those times I need it for the Holy Spirit for the one to be take over and not me. Yeah. And I think that's what happens. You know, it's funny. Um, I think sometimes we reserve prayer just for church or, or maybe just for tragedy or just for big events. Yeah. Um, but, but a relationship with God really makes you better everywhere, uh, even on ESPN. Yeah. The official on the play. Here's the thing. Doesn't see it in the slow motion as we see it, does he, guys? No, 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 no. no, no. I, we, no we understand. No, 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 no. He Hold sees on. it in real time. Oh, no, we, Steve, oh, no, we certainly understand that. No, 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 no. We and certainly understand guess that. On the Nobody's going to refute that. We certainly, he, we certainly understand that the official doesn't see it in slow motion. And I, and I'm looking back at different phases of my life, and I see God's hand in it where I didn't see it before. And as I reflect back how my relationship with God, if it, if it wasn't for sports, and if, as you, you said, that, if it wasn't for sports, I wouldn't have met my wife, who then reverted me back to my faith. You know, If it wasn't for sports and maybe me being an official for all those years and even getting injured, maybe the vocation of the diaconate wouldn't have been possible because of age-wise, I'd have been too old by the time yeah. I retired. Yeah. yeah, you know, and we've got the Super Bowl coming up, uh, you know, and, um, you know, oh, we're going to be really happy if the Eagles win and really sad if the Eagles lose. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'll be really, I'll be happy if the Eagles win for sure. I'll be cheering for them and, and hoping that they win. Um, but if that's my deepest happiness mm -hmm. and my deepest sadness, ooh, mm -hmm. something might, like I might be missing something. Like even if you're not sure about God yet, like loving my family well should be a little bit of a deeper happiness or loving them poorly should be a little bit of a deeper sadness and certainly loving God. And what I've found is that when I let God into my life, um, <laughs> there's a joy and a happiness and peace that transcends understanding, like St. Paul said, uh, and it's bigger than sports. And then when I go play sports with that kind of spiritual grounding, I'm just better. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember, Dan, um, speaking of the Super Bowl coming up Sunday, like sports was my end all. It was my God. There's no, I mean, I, I admit it. I mean, like I was, I, my parents didn't raise me. I was just raised in a sports family. Um, and my mentality, my attitude uh, was dictated by how this Philadelphia sports teams did. And especially like football. My dad was an NFL official, so I followed him around and loved football my whole life watching it. And if the Eagles lost on a Sunday, my Mondays, I was in a horrible mood. That's how much it dictated my life. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I'm going to watch it with my family too. And um, yeah, like I'm probably going to be a better dad watching sports with my kids when God's the center of my life. And, and I'm going to enjoy that moment with my family. If God's not the center of my life, I, I might be throwing things at the TV yeah, and right. swearing. That's and right. That's true. And, and what kind of dad am I? I know. Yeah, I think what's, what's happened, Dan, as you're saying that, I'm just thinking of what our world, the children don't hear that. The kids don't hear that about God in the world. They hear sports is the end all, entertainment is the end all, power is the end all, and they, said that they think that's what's going to make them happy. And as you were saying, you get more joy out of your family. You don't hear that on TV. No. You don't see that in social media. All they hear is this, this, and that's going to make you happy. And in the end, it doesn't. It leaves you wanting for more. And, and when he does bring you that happiness and peace, you just, you appreciate sports more in a better way. Like, um, I don't know, because sports just get to be sports and they don't have to be the God of your life. Like, um, you, and you don't feel that pressure and that weight, it, you know, like my value isn't determined upon whether I make this penalty kick in a big soccer game or not. Uh, it's, it's just, it's determined by God, the quality of my love for other people. And then soccer is just soccer. And then I make the penalty kick most times because you know what? I'm relaxed and I'm a better player when I'm relaxed. There have been other points where God was able to just help you through something as a referee or as an athlete or just have perspective and you've managed something in the athletic world better because... I think what I think of right away uh, is the fact that because of my relationship with the Lord, I was able to handle uh, what happened in my career. I retired because of an injury. I didn't retire because I wanted to. I probably would have still, if I wasn't injured, probably still officiated for another few more years. 
and, bec and the injury happens, and I had a couple of them injuries building up to the last one. And I think because of my relationship with the Lord, I was able to handle it, to know that God had a plan for me somewhere. Didn't know what it was going to be, obviously, but I knew he had a plan. Um, the great thing also, Dan, is the fact that, you know, people look at sports and you say, it is, it is a God around here, and they think, oh, you know, Deacon Jabby was on you know, ESPN, he is a referee and all. I mean, with my relationship with the Lord, putting that into perspective, because some people get puffed up about that. Oh, he's on TV officiating, he's refereeing in the finals, he's with Michael Jordan, all, all exciting things, don't get me wrong, all exciting things. But when I looked at it, I said, there's got to be something a little more important in life. I mean, the, the Lord's got to be asking me to do something. I don't want to leave this world, and I've said this before, of like being a basketball referee, you blow a whistle on basketball players. That, that doesn't, to me, I don't know about you, but to me, it doesn't sound like, wow, that's a real fulfilling life. No, it's a means to an end. I was, I was, it was exciting, I enjoyed it, and it provided for my family. But what's really important here? And I think the relationship with the Lord at the time that I needed him, when, when I'm thinking, oh my gosh, my career's coming to an end, of trusting in him and saying, I, I remember being the last game of my career. I vividly remember standing on the court in the finals game of 2011 saying, I wonder what the Lord has planned for me now. And just gave it to him and just allowed him to come into my life and say, here's where I'm gonna direct you. And this is where he's directed me. With you, Dan, with you. <laughs> oh, very yeah. good. <laughs> well, he's taken the first two shots and he hasn't hit the rim yet. That's a little nerve from the young player, but he's been terrific. Meanwhile, LeBron James nails the three-pointer. And, um, and I remember I, going through the course of the year, I knew it was going to be my last year because as I was getting to the end of the year, the knees started bothering me again, and I knew I couldn't go through it again. And so this is uh, 2011 now, uh, playoff time, and then now the last game I worked was the finals between Dallas and Miami. And it was game six in Miami. Dallas actually wins the championship that night. And then in transition, good find again by Berea, running to the three-point line, and the Dallas Mavericks are rolling. Knowing that it was my last game in my career, my wife was there, so my family members, my friends, they flew in and just watched me as, as, as I was working my last game in my career. That's a second foul on James. I mean, he didn't do it, but he did it right in front of him. That was an easy call. And, and I like this substitution of Cardinal for Mahimi. Prior to the game, as we're getting ready for the game, Mary Ellen and I, um, we start talking and reflecting about uh, you know, the career. And she goes, it's been pretty good. She says, you know, it's not bad. And I go, I know. And I wonder what's our plan going to be afterwards mm -hmm. and so on. And we thought about that. We talked about that. We prayed on it a little bit and not knowing what was going to happen. And then when we get to the game, and as the game's going on, we're getting towards the end of the game, it's obvious that Dallas is going to win. Mark Cuban starting to celebrate behind the Dallas bench. And I had a, a moment or two to be able to reflect while being on the court. While looking up, to, I knew where she was sitting, while looking up and looking at my wife saying, and just thank the Lord for this wonderful career that he gave me because I loved my career, because I love sports. And I just sat there and I went, wow, what's, what's going to happen next? Dallas Mavericks bench realizing that the jewelry is theirs. Well done. From the Miami Heat, the phones are wide open. Everybody is for sale. 16.1 seconds remaining. Terry gets it. And the Heat will not foul. Sean Marion dribbles it out. And a celebration will begin. The Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. The first title in franchise history. I remember when the game was over. There was no looking back. I know I couldn't referee another game because of my injury. And um, I was just praying and praying. And like six months later is when I, when Jeff Cavins was actually in this old church. That's right. It was in this old church right here. And Jeff Cavins gave his talk where I was praying for six months going like, Lord, what do you want? Not hearing anything. And it was here in this old church that the word deacon came in my mind while Jeff Cavins was preaching. Um, I should say giving his talk. And I've never looked back, you know, with the helps of the men here at the parish, of yourself, of course, the men's group, of Monsignor Picard, of all the support I got just to continue to follow what we think God had planned for me. Yeah. I still remember when Jeff Cavins was talking about how God speaks to you. Yeah. I remember sitting right here, like it's in this church, you're saying like, 
Yeah, dude, he might be speaking to you. He's not saying a word to me. He really isn't. But it's just God speaks to us, not like, hey, Moses, pardon the... With little ideas or little thoughts, little things he puts on your heart. Yeah, I think that God, he speaks to the deepest parts of us. And I think if we have a hard time hearing, it's because we're not willing to go to the deepest parts of us with him. Um, and sometimes it's because of woundedness or, or we don't know that we'll be loved because some of those deepest parts have some ugliness. Mm -hmm. And the good news is, is that God, he loves us unconditionally no matter what junk is in those deepest parts. And he's got a plan for uh, out of those deepest parts for whatever junk has happened there, whatever brokenness is there, he has a plan to lead you in new ways. And I, I think sometimes we are waiting for these external mm -hmm. signs mm -hmm. and God's like, I'm in your heart. I mean, that's where Jesus promises to be. Jesus at the Last Supper, uh, before he dies and then rises from the dead, he says to the apostles, uh, anyone who loves me, the Father and I, we will come to him and we will make our home inside of him. Like, we're looking for Jesus and for mm. signs all over the place. And Jesus is like, uh, you're baptized, you've got me, I've got my home is inside of you. Come into the deepest parts of you with me right. uh, and meet me there right. and, and let me speak to you there. Right. And, and yeah, and I, I, I share a funny story with you uh, with regard to saying about God being in your life and believing in God, believing there is a God. I mean, because that's the key, first of all, yeah. believe that there is a God. Yeah. As you talk in, a lot of your, in your, some of your talks also, my um, college baseball coach passed away this past year and there was a memorial mass for him. I think it was like 92, 93, God rest his soul, coached very successful at Temple, uh, baseball at Temple, and, um, and I remember going to the Memorial Mass, and it's funny, you saw the guys who were your, their teammates in different years hanging out with each other. And it was kind of neat to see that. And I walked up to one of my buddies who was within our uh, years we were playing together. Matter of fact, this one guy I, I was speaking to we spent a summer together in a summer league, a college summer league. So we lived together, we hung out together, we worked together and so on. Basically, he got to know me and I got to know him. And if he said a funny thing, because this is what people think, like some of my nephews think, oh, Uncle Steve, you were always this way. And I go, no, this guy tells, he says, Jav, because that was my nickname, and Jav, when I look at you, you're proof there is a God. <laughs> he says, because we knew each other back when in college, and now I'm looking at you now, there has to be a God, you know? I know, and this is amazing, because I think people think that becoming a deacon, or, be, you know, or just having Jesus the center of your life, I'm not worthy, I know how I, I was, and, and, it, and it reminded me, because you were just saying, he loves us within all our junk. He saw me, he created me, he saw the, the guy I was, and maybe not doing what I should be doing, but he can change all that when we just allow him into our hearts. Yeah, and for us as parents, that's the greatest gift we're going to give our kids. Sure it is. Because I think winning a, a CYO basketball game in eighth grade isn't going to give your kid more joy right. of happiness or love and peace than, than walking with God. Right. Uh, and then walking with God while winning or losing that game, it's going to be great no matter what happens. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up something, Dan, and maybe a topic for another day too, who knows. But um, I think about how influential moms and dads are to their children, as you were to as a coach. And I see, unfortunately, at the CYO level, the behavior, not of the kids, but of the parents. And I sit there and I think, and now you wonder why your child's gonna act a certain way later on? Because we're such role models that kids might not say anything, but they see it, and they might act the same way. And I know you want your kid to win. Your kid wants to win, the coach wants to win but there's a decorum that must be met. And when you are setting example, like you go on YouTube as you, you do, and you see the fights between seventh and eighth grade parents, or even worse, T-ball, yeah. because the umpire made, missed a call, and, and you have people, parents fighting, and it's just, it's, it's horrible, it really is. And you're, the lesson you're learning is to teach them in a Catholic Christian way, so if you lose the T-ball game, you know, in extra innings. Oh my gosh, when, when the person's 30 years old, he's not going to remember that, but he will remember how his parents reacted. Wouldn't it be better to lose with God than to win without him? I, I just have come to believe that. I don't think I always believed that, yeah. but I've come to discover in life that I would rather lose with God uh, than win without yeah, him, because having it. him is the biggest win. Yeah. Uh, so, Steve, as we wrap up, I'm going to close us with a prayer, and then mm -hmm. you, at All the right. last, uh, you, you got to add a prayer yes. for the eagles, yes. if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes. Amen. 
God, you're a good God. Um, we thank you for being good to us. You have plans for our, our entire lives, not just our professional lives or our family lives or our one hour on Sunday. You have plans even for our athletic lives as coaches, as players, even as fans. Uh, so God, we just invite you into, the, into our athletic lives and our competitive lives right now. If you'd like to let God into your life a little more deeply today, uh, I just invite you to repeat these words after me and invite God into your athletic and competitive life. Uh, so just repeat these words after me. God, God, I invite you into my life now. I invite you into my life now. I invite you into my athletic life. I invite you into my athletic life. As a coach. As a coach. As a player. As a player. As a fan. As a fan. And as a parent. And as a parent. Help me to be the Catholic Christian. Help me to be the Catholic Christian. You always desired me to be. You always desired me to be. Amen. And Steve, Amen. would you uh, just pray for us and for the? Yeah. I, I, again, I, it's all gratitude. It's all gratitude. Our Lord bringing us here today, Dan. I, I thank the Lord for bringing the Holy Spirit to talk about things that maybe people are uncomfortable hearing and so on. I ask Heavenly Father to bless the parents out there that they can raise their children to be Catholic Christian children, God-fearing children, that God's at the center of their life. We ask you to take care of us this weekend, Heavenly Father, and not to put too much in the outcome of this Super Bowl. We know people on both sides are rooting for their team, there's no doubt. We ask that you take care of the players, the coaches, and the referees, that they can perform to the best of their ability on this day. But please, Heavenly Father, let the Eagles win another Super Bowl. Amen. Amen. The Father, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can see. You're, the You're the very best. I appreciate all the time. It's fun talking sports with you and talking life with you. So thank you. Final game of the NBA season. And thanks for watching ABC, home of the NBA Finals.